All right, so now we got our pole all set up and everything. We're going to just connect to the rover. So basically the same process as connecting to the base. We're just going to select that receiver so that you can rename these in the web UI. You know, I can name them base and rover, which is fine. I, some guys like that. I like to just use the serial numbers that way in case if I want to use this as the, if I want to use my rover as the base or vice versa, then I don't know, it's a little less confusing. Just look at the number on the bottom, it's right there. So that's my personal opinion, but all I'm gonna do is hit connect. It's gonna go through and uh, the screen will just shut off, but um, I'll have this on the side by side, you'll see. So, oh, all right, fixed. So now we can come into our survey. Let's go point stake out. Um, Oh, so it's already selected on 212 on a point. Let's just go back point survey. There we go. So now we're on the map here. So a couple things about the layout of this. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and move this over here. Forgive me. I've ordered an actual camera that would make this a lot easier. Just haven't got it. And and I gotta get some time to set it up. So apologies for the motion sickness. Um, all right. So on our screen here, we've got a lot of useful tools, but basically pretty simply is up top here, you can see our residual values. We can see our sats. We can see our latency from our base. We can see our battery percentage. That's our, that's our receiver battery percentage that you can see up in the top right corner. That's the data collector battery percentage. Um, then you got north, northern eastern elevation right down below that. And sensor disabled is the tilt compensation. So I, it's a really helpful tool when you need it. I run with it off if I'm not using it. You can hit leave it on all the time if you want. All you got to do is do a pull tilt correction, click that on. And now we're, now we're using the tilt. Um, there is a calibration procedure that I do periodically for it. Uh, but like I said, I only, if I'm going to use it, I go through the calibration procedure, I turn it on, I check it, I utilize it. If not, I still level my pole just because I don't think it's that much extra work personally. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn that back off because it will pop up and it'll, if you've been static for a while and you haven't moved, you know, and, and you know, like my, I get on the phone and my pole sitting here, it'll, it'll actually disable itself if it hasn't send any movement in a while but if you're out like walking around and you maintain a good fixed position then you're not gonna have any issues um so i'll do more in-depth videos going through all these different buttons but pretty nice on the screen um i'm not connected i don't have any wi-fi or anything on but you can see when i try to pan around it'll move back to it'll move the my location back to the center of the screen if i just click these feet down here then I can move and pan around. It's pinch to zoom. You you know, do whatever zoom extents, get you back on screen. I typically leave those off, just because if you're on 40 acres, it takes a while to walk out of your window. You know, and I don't typically zoom in too wildly far unless you know I'm getting down in and staking something tight. Then I may turn that on if I'm staking lines and stuff like that. Um, this is our CAD feature. I'm not going to go into this in this video, but a wildly useful function. Um, kind of a Kogo y type feature, which we have Kogo stuff as well, but uh, you can turn point labels on and off. Layers, we can edit and change a lot of stuff in there. Well, like I said, we'll dive more into that. I wish I was on. This has a, this data collector has a SIM card port. I typically just run off my hotspot. You can do it either way, but if you're connected, we can turn on maps. I don't think I have a raster for this, no. But if we were connected, we get background maps. Um, really handy projects like this, not as much, but when you're out doing new topos and stuff, it's really handy to have that map on back there. Our points list over here. Um, you can add, edit, do all that kind of stuff. And then our record is if we want to take a shot, we can do, if you click up on this. Right now I've got them set at 30. Um, which is excessive, I know, but I was doing some stuff that I wanted a little longer shots on, you know, but it's, oh, oh, 303, change it to. 
So now it'd be a three second shot if we take it, we'll just hit it real quick here. But you'll see here, so it saves it. Um, gives you all the details. You can do photo and sketch if you want to uh, take a photo. It'll switch over here and you can take a, you know, say you got a, you know, an invert or something or whatever you want to take a photo of. You can photo and then you can draw on the photo and it'll log it in the in the export you can export those out with your points um, but you can take it and then you can draw all over it kind of handy I, i've only used a handful of times but um something if you notice there on the naming feature i didn't end up saving that point but if you it just named it ever whatever your last point was so just make sure when you shoot your first one if you're going to shoot a series of them you can uh you can uh here let's just do this one more time so baseball one, you can do a code. This is handy. Oh, it's because I got my recorded on. <laughs> what is handy? There you go. So you can talk your codes in there. It's got a code library. You can put custom codes in there. Um, but pretty handy tool. So that's the basic gist of it. So now I can go out on, on site um, and do all my functions. My height stake out, like I said earlier, that is our... Um, I'm gonna delete this one. Uh, I I will say I had I've had this on just two different TTMs where they don't want to work properly. I dropped the DXF in here; it worked fine. Um, but I've had a bunch of other jobs I've done with TTMs and they work fine. So I have to look at the files and figure out if it's something I'm missing there, if it's on the software end or something like that. But pretty easy workaround. But I'm not on the design. I can walk over here on the design. Let's just. It, why not? We're already we're already recording. Let's just go. I wouldn't recommend doing what I'm doing just because I haven't hit any point of reference. I don't know if my setup's right. If I messed something up or didn't mess something up, but actually now I'm looking at there's some guys doing pipe work over here. They're right on the edge of design. I'm not going to go get in their way. I'm out here just goofing, so. We're gonna leave that alone. I'll make. I'll go to the other side of the job where they're not working. I'll make a video on that kind of stuff, and I'll hit some points and check in and make sure we're actually good. So I'm doing this the way that I would tell people to actually do it. So, all right. I well, hope that helps a little bit. Makes a little more sense. But you can see what's nice is um, I didn't show you, but there is a you can repeat position of. Uh, of the base so like it you know i've got it set up to repeat position so if i took this down and then i came back out here later as long as i didn't go somewhere else and connect to it and set it up it'll start back up there same thing now that this is all set up uh, i just open it up hit connect i don't need to connect to my base just connect to the rover you know go right to fix and i can go check in and, and go to work so yep that's uh that's the start of the some videos here on the stone x cubay stuff Hope you guys like it. Uh, if you want to know some more, leave a comment, shoot me a message, and uh, we'll see what we can do.